Tansi. The creative team at Nikolai's Plant Adventures would like to acknowledge that we are filming on Treaty 6 territory at Amiskwaskigwa Squagan, also known as the Beaver Hill House. We would like to acknowledge and thank all the Indigenous people of Turtle Island. We wouldn't be where we are today without their stewardship of the land and all their unique nations and teachings. I hope to honor my heritage and ancestors by passing down the importance of nature and storytelling through this show. We keep our cultures alive through the stories we tell, and I hope someday to hear yours as well. Miigwech. Hi hi. Look at this, all the snow melted. Most of the grass is still brown, and many of the trees are still bare. But it won't be like that for long. Soon the buds will pop open and leaves will begin to grow, because it's spring. Spring is the perfect time to talk about plants. It is when all the plants and animals wake up from the cold winter months and start to grow again. Wildflowers and native flowers are especially important in supporting the local ecosystem. It helps them to thrive. By understanding nature better, we can help plants and animals grow up safe and happy. Join me on my adventure to learn more about spring. Hello everyone, it's great to see you again. Last adventure, we took a closer look at seeds. Seeds are very important. It's like the baby stage of the plant. We also took a look at indigenous teachings, like the three sisters, and how they would plant three specific seeds together because of how they support one another. Beans, corn, and squash. It's really neat how they figured out how the three sisters work so well together. After that, I quickly showed you how to plant your own seeds. It's a really quick process, so you also have to find things to do while you're waiting for it to grow. Then finally, I had a friend of mine share a story from their culture. Dene culture, which is a First Nations culture you can find here in Alberta. This myth is similar to another myth I told, Hades and Persephone, earlier on in our adventures. It's talking about the changing of seasons, going from winter to summer. It's interesting to look at how the stories are so different from one another. Well, I hope you enjoyed them. Let's start our adventure today. Now let's take a look at pollinators. Pollinators help spread the pollen of flowers to different flowers to help them grow better. All sorts of things can be pollinators, like different bugs and beetles, and even animals and bats. Pretty much anything that goes in to the flower gets some pollen on them and spreads it around. On today's adventure, I'm going to visit a special friend of mine, 
Her name's Maddie. She knows a lot about bees. And she's going to share some information with me. Let's listen. Honeybees are responsible for pollinating $2 billion worth of crops for Canada. That is 65 million pounds of honey per year. Alberta is the biggest honey producer in Canada because we have 40% of the Canadian bee population. We even have beekeeping classes here in Edmonton. Having so many bees here is important for our farmers. Crops produce two to eight times more when they are pollinated. Flowers and bees have symbiotic relationships. They need each other to thrive. The flowers and the plants need to get pollinated in order to make seeds for new flowers. And the bees need the nectar to make their main source of food, honey. Bees do this by sucking out the nectar of the flower into their honey stomach. Then they will put the pollen into the pollen sac. The bee taking this pollen is really important for both the bee and the flower. The bee gets protein it needs from the pollen, and the bee can help spread the pollen for the flowers. It is so important for the flowers to get pollinated. For many plants that make fruits and vegetables, they need to get pollinated to start growing the fruits. These fruits are important because they hold the plant seeds. After the hive workers place nectar and pollen into empty cells, the nectar in these cells have enzymes in them from the bee. At this point, the honey is very watery. To remove the extra water, the bees will fan the cells with their wings. When the honey is the right consistency, it isn't too hard or watery, they cap it with wax. At the hive, the returning bees will do a vital dance to tell the other bees where the good flower sources are. The dance is complex. The bees will use the angle of the sun to help them determine how far away the flowers are. The bees move in a figure eight pattern. The middle of the dance shows which direction to go. It will show what angle the bees need to leave the hive at, using the sun as a point of reference. And how long the figure eight goes shows how far the flowers are. And the bees will express how many flowers there are by how excitedly they dance. Also, other bees will join into the dance if they get really excited. There are many different species of bees out there, and each are unique. Sometimes, other bugs that aren't bees will pretend to be them in order to get a little extra protection. Predators don't like to go after bees because of their stinger, and imitators will take advantage of that. They want the predators to think they're bees, even though they're not. As you heard from Maddie's facts, bees are very important to us. So it is important that we take care of bees as well. We can do this by planting wildflowers. Wildflowers are particularly important for bees because they are a natural part of our ecosystem. We can also do this by not raking our lawns for the first little while of spring. That little bit of leaf foliage that's left on the ground at the beginning of spring is really important for animals, bugs, and plants to recover from the winter months. Another way we can help bees is reducing our use of insecticide. Insecticide is a type of spray that can kill bugs. This can be useful when dealing with pesky bugs within our home. However, it can also hurt really important bugs like bees. So we should be careful with what we do. I also thought about all the different parts bees have, like a head. A bee's head is similar to our head, like it has eyes and a mouth. But our mouths look pretty different. At the very front there you'll see those two little black spots. Those are the mandibles. That's like its jaw that it uses to chew through things. It looks very different to ours. Bees also have antennae. 
the next part of the bee is also different from this. It is the thorax. It has its legs attached to it. If an insect has wings, like a bee does, it'll also be attached to the thorax. The final part of the bee is the abdomen. This is like the butt of the bee. For insects like bees that have stingers, this is also where it will be. It's really cool to look at bees in all their different parts. I really like their yellow and black coloring. This coloring is used as a warning to predators to say, don't eat me, I'll hurt you. Maddie also shared what the bee life cycle looks like. Let's take a look. Day one, the queen lays the egg. Day four, the egg hatches and becomes larva. Day 10, the larva becomes a pupa. Workers will cap the cell with wax and the larva will make a cocoon. Day 22, they will come out of the cell by chewing through the cap, an adult bee. Day 22 to 24, they will clean cells so new eggs can be laid. This is a very important job. Day 24 to 32, they will become nurses to take care of other baby bees that are in the larva and pupa state. Day 32 to 40, they are builders that will make wax to make more honeycomb and seal cells with wax. Day 40 to 43, they are guards and protect the hive from invaders like wasps, other rival bees, beetles, or bears, or anything else that is trying to enter the hive. Day 43 and onwards, they become foragers and look for pollen and nectar. Bees are fantastic little pollinators, but sometimes people can be scared of them. They have this black and yellow warning color to tell you to stay away because they can sting. Other things like bees, like wasps or other insects, can also have these colors to show they're dangerous. But it's important that we learn about scary things like bees so we can better take care of them and take care of our environment. That's really cool learning about bees. Now, let me show you how Maddie and I made these bees. Nikolai's Guide to Making Your Own Bees. You'll need pipe cleaners and some scissors, but they're not necessary. You'll notice that me and Maddie go about making this bee a little bit different, but we use some of the same basic principles. First, we start off with the head. We wrap up the pipe cleaner into a tight little ball. I try to shape mine so there's like a little pointed nose. It's kind of hard to see. But Maddie likes to keep hers nice and tight and all together. Next, we work on the thorax and abdomen. Again, we are just wrapping more parts together. I like using this funky pipe cleaner with yellow and black. Once that we have the main body parts done, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, we start putting in some of the other details, like the wings. When you're attaching different parts together, make sure you hook onto them so they'll stick all together. And sometimes you need to tighten and fasten it by twisting the different pipe cleaners. Next, we can put on the legs. You can either cut smaller pieces to make the legs, or you can try folding it all up so it all stays in one piece. With folding it up, it takes a little bit more to wiggle all the pieces in together to get it all fixated right. At the very end, we added a little handle. This was very easy. You just string one pipe cleaner through and loop it around and then kind of twist it all together to make it nice and tight and sticks together. Maddie came up with this idea because it helps the bees do the little waggle they do their dance. That was a lot of fun making these bees. Don't worry if your bees doesn't look like mine or Maddie's. There are many different kinds of bees out there. It's okay to look different. 
It's actually pretty fun. I hope you make some neat bees. After all our adventures, we've been reading different stories, and it's been really amazing. It's really inspiring, and I want to try write my own story. Can you help me? First, let's talk about important parts we need in our story. Like the characters. This is who will be involved in the story. For some stories, like Hades and Persephone, it's the gods. For the Dene myth about summer, it had animals as some of the characters. What characters should we have in my story? Next, I have to think of the setting. This is where the story will take place. In the story like the Ukrainian myth, it took place in a dirt house. And that was very important to the story. What setting should I put in my story? Next, we have to think of the problem in the story. That might sound kind of weird. Think of a problem. But it helps make stories interesting. And these problems can reflect problems we have in our own life. For example, like Hangbu and Nobu. The problem was Nobu's unkindness. This leads into the other important part of stories, the solutions. How does the problem get solved? How does the story end? For example, in Hangbu and Nobu, Nobu learned to change his ways. He learned it was not right to treat people that way. Not all stories end neat and tidy with a happy ending though. Like the flying canoe, they broke the promise, and then they crashed into the mountain. I wonder what kind of ending I want to my story. Do I want a happy ending? Or do I want a different kind of ending? I think I've thought of it. Let me know what you think. There was a small bee that lived in a beehive. She was still young, so she worked in there. In a couple days, though, she would be old enough to go outside for the first time. Most of the bees around here were excited for their first day of flying, but she felt really scared. What if I get lost? What if I can't find my way home? She wanted to ask someone for help, but she was too scared to. Bees were good navigators. It'd be embarrassing to ask for help. She waited with nervous energy until her first flight. Her stomach felt woozy and her legs would start to shake because she was so nervous. Finally, the day came. During the takeoff, she hesitated. Her worry overwhelmed her and she just stopped. But someone bumped her out of the beehive. She quickly caught herself and started flying. The first part of the flight went pretty well, as she expected. She knew how to fly and she knew how to find flowers. But she was still scared of coming home. Would she make it back? Just then, something happened that made it worse. It started to rain. Rain can be dangerous for bees because they're so small. If they're flying, it can knock them out of the sky. Quickly, she hid under a leaf. She was safe and cozy under the leaf, but anxious thoughts flooded to her again. With this rain, I really won't make it home. 
I really did get lost, she thought. She felt really sad. Will my hive mates miss me? Or worse, if I did make it home, would they be mad at me? Would I be an embarrassment? Finally, the rain stopped, and the little bee tried to make it home. The flight home was a lot longer. She kept flying to trees that didn't have her hive. She was starting to get really frustrated. As it started to get dark, she finally had some luck. There was a beehive, and she was certain it was hers. So she found the strength in her wings to beat just a little bit faster. As she got closer, she felt relief. It was her hive. She flew in, happy to be home. The other bees rushed in as she came in. They were worried about her. The other bees were so happy that she was safe and sound. That's what she realized. All that worrying was for nothing. Her worst fear happened. She did get lost, but she also made it home. And the other bees were not mad. They were just happy she made it back. It's okay to do something scary, she thought. Chances are, you can overcome it. I hope you liked that story. I worked really hard to make it. I'm so excited I had this adventure with you. I'm really happy I took this opportunity. It was a bit scary starting out. Could I do it? Would people like it? That's a fear a lot of us have. Which is why I wrote my B character that way. She was scared to start her adventure. But it was worth it. I got to show off my friends. I met new people. I learned new things. And I got to go places I never went before. It's worth trying out hard new things. You might just learn something new. I hope you have fun going on your own adventures and meeting new challenges. Find and make new stories to tell. And I hope our paths cross again. Miigwech. Hi hi. <laughs>